Friday morning, 74 degrees. I love this. Um, wasn't going to release a video today. I've been struggling all week here. I guess our inside refrigerator decided to die. So everything's defrosting. We're throwing stuff out left and right, but whatever. So for this video, um, maybe long awaited, uh, all the work, weeks and weeks worth of work here to create a touch DRO and blue DRO user manual. I'm going to show um, how it basically works and how to fire it up um, all the basics that I had to struggle to figure out so hope you enjoy and I hope next Friday I'll be able to show how to incorporate a tachometer into the blue DRO if you like me you bought the uh, eye gauge easy view DRO plus and you want to go up another level so the next level up is the blue dro a little box called the blue dro and if you buy it you're going to be searching all over the place trying to figure out how to work it because the information on it scattered all over the place there's a sentence over here on this website that says this and then there's another sentence over there that says that but so I've spent a lot of time weeks here and I've got a complete user manual for the app that runs it touch DRO and the blue DRO user manual 22 pages it contains everything including the full schematic of the blue DRO which is in here somewhere oh well so, um, first thing you got to do to run the Blue DRO is you need to run an application called Touch DRO. One word, no spaces. Now, the Touch DRO requires an Android operating system of at least 4.0. And I'm not sure if you can go higher. I've got one little function in it that's not working. and. I don't know whether it's because I'm up at, I think it, this is 5.1 or something here. But you need at least 4.0, you need a device that has Bluetooth capability, and it's recommended to have a 7 inch screen with 800 by 480 or better resolution for the screen to properly lay out, which you'll see in a minute here. So. And I'm pretty sure if you have an iPhone, then you're out of luck because it, it needs the Android system. Um, so the first thing you do, uh, this is a Galaxy Tablet A. Um, they, I found them new on Amazon, so this is what I chose to put the app in. So you go to the Google Play Store and you search for Touch DRO. Your icon kind of looks like this, and actually I'll put the picture up there. What you're searching for is an icon like this, is Yuri's Toys Touch DRO free. Download, install it, and once you've got it installed, then go ahead and launch it. And it's going to look like this. Um, everything's going to be gray because you're not connected through Bluetooth to your... Um, blue DRO unit yet. Um, you can see mine's trying to connect but I don't have it powered up. So first there will be a pop-up that says you gotta do some calibration. Feel free to check the box. Don't display that again. That's fine. Um, actually I think the first one pop-up was asking to access your device's Bluetooth and you need to say yes to that because the connection is between uh, is uses Bluetooth to connect to the blue DRO so once you're in there um, it's gonna look like this there is not a whole lot that you need to do at this point um, so the next thing you're gonna do is you'll be installing the blue DRO make sure you uh, terminate this program before you do any of that Next up, mount the blue DRO unit. 
itself. It's hard to see mine. I chose to mount it on Velcro on the back of the column. You need to put it someplace where it's away from magnetic fields and like the motor and so on. Cabling too, I've kind of bundled it all up so it's not susceptible to magnetic fields. I can disconnect, pull it off here just so you can see the unit. There it is. Connect up all your axes before you power the unit up. The unit uses micro USB. Some of the older um, generation scales use mini USB and so they're not compatible. The X's inputs are X, Y, Z, and W. W is the same thing as all the other axes so that you can use that for perhaps rotational, angular inputs, something like that. Once you have it all powered or all connected up and mounted, then you can go ahead and power it up using the supplied um, power supply, the little AC power adapter that plugs into the wall. That particular unit is a switching type, and what happens is it's creating a little bit of noise uh, on the DC power line. So if you later on in your touch DRO program decide to uh, enable the tenth digits, in other words, a tenth of a thousandth, you will see them fluctuating. You could see them fluctuating and just jumping all over the place. So to eliminate that, use a transformer type. You can tell they're bigger, square, heavier. They produce a lot more cl cleaner uh, DC power than um, the stock one that's delivered. All you need is anything from 7 to 15 volts DC, 200 milliamps, and you're good to go. Next up, I'm going to assume that your blue DRO is plugged in and powered up. So what you need to do next is you need to pair um, your device with it. So find the settings area for your device and tell it to scan for available Bluetooth devices. You're looking for something called HC-05. Once you find it or your device finds it, try to pair with it. If it asks for a key, enter one, two, three, four and connect to it. Once you're done, you can finally launch your Touch DRO application. And um, it's going to do a bunch of random things here. And this time, mine just connected automatically. Sometimes um, it doesn't connect. Sometimes it asks for permission to um, connect to your Bluetooth device again, use your Bluetooth stuff, all kinds of random things. So um, you just got to kind of stumble through it. There is a touch area here. I can say disconnect right there. And then I can say connect and there it is it's going to ask for the device and I just select the device and it's connecting done once it's connected um, I just typically zero things out and here's the y-axis you test the axis make sure everything's working x-axis and the z-axis everything is touch screen and you can scroll too so be aware of that your settings are all up here on these three dots, so click on that, click settings, and there's a whole bunch. The user manual describes all of it. The first two I haven't explored yet, so I'm not sure what they are, what they do. Machine type, uh, keep in mind I've set this thing for mill. I have not explored the lathe area yet. Um, a lot of this is all you know, metric mode, you know, use Bluetooth, all your axes. Is... Now remember it had that pop-up that you have to calibrate it. There is a video on YouTube on how to calibrate your axes, each axis using one, two, three blocks. I'm not sure why you would really want to do that since the manual and I found on different websites the numbers that you just plug in 
which is the um, counts per inch. I'm running um, eye gauge, which the manual lists for the eye gauge and a bunch of other ones. What you just plug in, which is 2560, cancel. So you plug that into all the axes. Now they're calibrated and I highly recommend that you put a dial indicator on each axis and verify what the touch DRO says the, the position is or the increments does match the dial indicator. So it, a lot of this is self-explanatory. I do have the tech enabled, which I'm fighting, been fighting with for the past two weeks, trying to get to run. Um, so hopefully next Friday I'll be successful. Each axis you can touch the actual digits and look at the details for the axis. A lot of different functions in there. Um, just simply change the sign on it for mirroring position. The half is really interesting. I like this because if I'm on the x-axis and let's say I've got a um, edge finder in there and I'm moving it and I just found one edge. Now um, you, this is where you can, uh, before you saw me zero out everything, here's where you can individually zero out an axis. So now I've found one edge, I've zeroed it out. Now I'm moving over to the other edge, and just for ease, I'll go to a hundred thousandths. So up too far. Four, three, two, one, zero. Now, if you want to find the center of that part, you just hit the half. It says I got to go to fifty thousandths, and I'll be on center. Which is really interesting. So there's a couple of things you can do too. So now. I'm on center, but being an edge finder, you know, you're actually a hundred thousandths off. So I can hit the actual digits and I can say, I want to set the dimension to 0.1 set. Now I know I'm really 0.1, so I can move it so I'm really on center. You got to pay attention to which side of the device you are because you might have to change the sign saying I got to go this way to zero it out or change it this way to go that way to zero it out. Um, this is the one function that I found that doesn't work. It's supposed to beep and change frequencies as you get closer to zero. All it does is beep. <laughs> so I've tried everything under the sun. If anybody knows how that's supposed to work, please let me know. So that's the settings. This is getting into um, the individual axes. Each one of them you can manually zero out, find center, do all kinds of different things with. Um, manual describes all that. Describe what, anything else in here. Yeah, you can add tools. So uh, you can add end mills and things like that. Um, I do have tools entered in here, some of my different cutters for different functions. So when you get into some of these other functions down here, they're really good. Um, and I guess I'll explain them next. Not exactly sure why the camera doesn't pick up the green, but all of this is green here. And it's gray when you're not connected, and the second you're connected it turns green. So it lets you know that you're connected other than saying connected up in the corner. For these functions, I'm not going to show all of the functions. The user manual explains them. They're pretty easy to figure out actually. I'll just show the circle function. It's just simple. You just want to have a radius here. So let's say 0.5 for the radius. Next. Uh, four holes, why not? Next. And angle 45 degrees next so I'm basically done the manual explains all the other pieces to it so there's the points now in my workspace um, for the circle you can click here and you say preview workspace and there it is uh, my actual position with respect to the four holes make sure you turn on this guy auto select nearest point 
that way these digits your position as you get closer to a hole will automatically look into sync or focus on that particular hole so if I'm moving here uh, you can see all of a sudden these digits will change there it goes when I get close to the hole so all it is is just a matter of zeroing everything out and then you drill your hole and you move for the next one now the cool thing is you can actually use your fingers to zoom in if you want on your position uh, at 3000 zero boom. and so I drill the hole there so the functions are pretty easy um, to do once you've drilled it you can actually click up here and say clear the points and they're all gone yeah boom gone so um, that's basically how the circle function works you have other ones for arbitrary holes and patterns and so on so this would conclude I think everything that you can do or everything to point out about this guy that um, is not very obvious you know like the expanding of things to zoom in touching here and then touching the digits to set the absolute point so it's pretty good there's still some work that I have to do like I said I'm trying to figure out the RPM and hopefully I'll be successful by the next video so I hope you enjoy and I'm not sure where I'm gonna post the user manual yet but it will be coming pretty soon